Howdy, back at it again with some more Bloodborne content. This is the final box, I swear. So this is the Chalice Dungeon expansion, which came as a standard with the Kickstarter campaign, but is also an expansion that can be purchased at retail, I believe. So, this is oriented around the actual Chalice Dungeons, which are an extra element to Bloodborne, which allows you to explore underneath Yharnam. It gives you quite a lot of the lore as well, but for the board game itself, it gives you, I believe, some campaigns. Does it say so? It does a lot, actually. A lot that the main game doesn't do, which shocked me when I read this. But it has player v player, and you can hide your stuff. So when you've got cards laid down, you can hide them, which is nice. It actually has traps, lots of bosses, lots of more enemies. It almost doubles the content that you got in the base game. But I don't know how much it'll actually enable you to integrate, but... It even has its own new rules. So, let's crack this open and have a look at some of the beasties inside. As I said last time, I have done nothing but play this game, and I love it. It is torture at times. You feel like you can manipulate certain elements of it, and you almost convince yourself you're going to win. But you aren't. And it's heartbreaking, and at the same time, you still keep coming back to it. So... Single A3 spread rule summary. All your components, chalice dungeon setup. You get chalice traps, which have a thing inside the game. And then you've got hunter versus hunter setup with some special rules. We've got some new tiles in the style of the chalice dungeons themselves. Lots and lots of what are they called? Come on, use the word lanterns. Lots of opportunity for enemies. I've not seen a room like that actually yet, which is quite nice. Arena gate lever, which is cool. And then we get into the actual content. And this has fallen out, as I have learned from my previous one. But here are the player v player, hunter v hunter boards. They've got little folds in, like that, so you can hide it. And it explains what happens and what you need to do. So in combat, attack as usual, place one card face down and empty attack slot. At that speed, move two, transform weapon or utilize firearm. All these can be staggered. All hunt attacks are basic attacks for firearms. Remove one insight token and go to the hunter's dream. If you cannot, you are eliminated. Hunters do not grant blood echoes when slain. So you could effectively just be a bit of a problem for everyone else trying to solve the dungeon. And take everyone out. This game seems addicted to these cardboard boxes. It's fantastic for getting everything out, but it almost makes the box itself redundant because I could just store the game in this. But the box is so pretty, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at what we got. I can see someone's falling out, which makes me... Oh, there he goes. He's given up. Bless him. So, first off, we'll go for these cards, these sheets. We've got, from the look of it, four new hunters. We have the Beast Claw Hunter. On kill, heal to and move to. Nice balance of attacks. And the alternate side. On attack, if you have three HP or less, the attack gains plus one speed and plus one damage. That's almost like a push your look sort of uh, character. The Shikage, or Chikage. Nice and balanced. It is a... Samurai Sword, effectively, is a, just a blade. And when you use that, you activate the blood inside it, and on attack, you may suffer one damage to increase the speed and the attack. So that could be another desperate situation sort of style. The Stake Driver, which is a fantastic weapon used by Jura. Oh, you only get one move on that, but that is four damage. Two damage to all enemies within one space. That is very desperate, because the speed of it is atrocious. But that could have a massive setup. And the rifle spear, utilised by Slash himself without his hair. Very balanced. And of course, when you're using it in two hands, you deal one extra attack, attack for each move action taken this round. So that's quite nice. A bit of prep you needed for that. So let's pop this fella back in here. And we have got many cards. These are all going to be Phases, phase attacks for enemies. So I'm not going to crack those open. 
These are all the enemies with their healths, so I'm not going to crack these open, but it's much more interesting to look at the models. Instead, I am going to crack open the enemy list, and we can have a look through these. I'm sure you have noticed what I have noticed as well inside of there. Some of those models are monolithically big. So we've got the rabid dogs, which are these boys. They're not very nice, as you can probably guess. Rabid dogs move incredibly quick as well. Yeah, they, they move too when attacking or pursuing. And you've got the alternate side. We've got the Keeper of the Old Lords. And in some respects, I'm a little bit disappointed that this is a simple enemy. Simply on that basis that in the game, this fella was a boss. And was quite a decent adversary to go against in the Chalice Dungeons. Why have they chosen to do them wrong by that and put them in there? Fluorescent flower. Now, can I crack this? Yep, I can launch all those out. Pop that there. Take off this lid. And we can have a look at the fluorescent flowers. And the fluorescent flowers are terrifying. Genuinely terrifying. So there's the flower bit. And the rest of it is just this gigantic centipede-like beast. <laughs> Absolutely horrifying. You see that first time in the game. You, you run. That is the rule of thumb. You run. What else we got? Gravekeeper Scorpion, which is one of these. It's just a scorpion, but it does have a poison effect on its enemy card, which makes it quite scary. Not much health, though. Hunting Dog, which are these fellas, which are like the rabid dogs, but, well, covered in knives, blades in the teeth. Blades on the legs. That dog had one purpose, and I'll tell you what, it weren't to play fetch. Labyrinth Rat. Which again, an enemy that is able to give poison. And they are that big in the game. Bigger than your hunter. And the Bell Ringer. Now the Bell Ringer, you'll notice, has a different card entirely to the rest. And that is because the Bell Ringer, who is this fella here is able to summon more enemies, and that is her entire purpose. When you get into the Chalice Dungeons in the video game, if should you play it, if you hear a bell ring, you run, you find her, you take her out, because she's going to ruin your day. So, we're on to the big boys. The absolutely terrifying beasts. So, I'm going to start with this one, because it is the smallest. This is the Beast Possessed Soul which looks like quite a small adversary, but is a boss. We also have the Undead Pirate. There's variants of him in the game, and sometimes he can have a cannon. If I can get him back in, I'll just that after. You, you just sit there. We have the Thumerian. Which is possibly the people who lived underneath Yarnum and built the Chalice Dungeons. He is terrifying and he is quick. We have the Keeper of the Old Lords, which is a massive model. I'm going to get one of the actual hunters out, which I'm going to show you in a second, compare. Just in size. He is huge. I think he's the biggest model, actually, in the game. Not the weightiest, but one of the longest, possibly the largest. Absolutely horrific. And the Queen of Yarn. And that's all I'm going to say on that matter. So, I'm going to quickly go through the hunters as well. We have the Beast Claw Hunter. Look at the quality of that. Love it. I love the detail. All these enemies look as horrific as they would in the game if they were all grey. Love. You can even see the glasses, which is awesome. Chicago Hunter. And the Stake Drive Hunter. Very cool. So, like I said with the previous unboxing for the um, Blood Moon box, this stuff can be, of course, used into the Chalice Dungeons, and you could integrate it into the other campaigns, which is great. 
but its purpose is centered on the campaign it's built for and the campaign it's going to be built for is going to be that chalice dungeon i am going to crack these open because i've just remembered there are traps available so yeah these are going to be centered around the chalice dungeon you could integrate them into your campaigns as you wish but whether you're going to want to or whether you're going to do that on the fly is of course another matter so they're the weapons all specific to those hunters very basic stuff actually um just pistols but i think that's because their weapons are so advanced in comparison so the chalice dungeon setup select three random enemies one boss is random in place so yeah it's complete free play chalice dungeon mission slay the chalice boss so that is almost what the campaign becomes but then you have these rights which are what happen to well the hunters when you start a chalice dungeon in the video game everything changes you might be reduced to half health for the entire game or your damage might be hard, or there might be bonuses for certain things, or certain enemies might appear gradually. This is set to be set up as the same as a normal campaign. The difference there would be that you would be able to choose, and then it would be a random boss, so you'd almost shuffle the ones you got available. And that could be from any campaign as well, so if you're going for the long haul and going on a couple of hunts, you might choose to integrate all the campaign bosses, and then it might be that ominous moment when you're thinking, I really, really hope that I don't encounter this boss and then sod's law is <laughs> they, they're going to come and they're going to ruin your day that is it that is all the bloodborne content i've got at the moment but i am on the lookout for some more because to say i'm addicted to this is an understatement i love the theme the quality the execution of the gameplay love it thank you ever so much for sticking around for this long i will catch you next time